All right, so today we're gonna talk about irrigation and a company called Irrigation. If you're not familiar with Irrigreen, Irrigreen is a uh, irrigation company that uses uh, digital heads. They've created their heads themselves. And what this allows you to do is actually adjust the stream of how far each sprinkler head um, can shoot, which if you think about it, is really awesome. Now, let me just put a quick clip here um, somewhere. Um, essentially, it does the contour of your grass, right? Which is awesome. You know, you've got like a, maybe like a heating uh, or air conditioning unit that you don't want to spray or um, a car, uh, which is in my case was, was one of the reasons why I like this, a car. Um, but there's also, another, the other benefit of having a digital head is there's no waste, right? There's, they're not overlapping 50%, which is what most uh, irrigation companies do, is they put a whole bunch of sprinkler heads, which covers the grass, but then there's all this waste because you know, this area has got this much water, but then where they're overlapped, they get a ton of water, right? A ton, uh, too much water. So um, I looked at Aerogreen. Um, the other benefit of Aerogreen is their shooting distance, if you have the water pressure, is pretty far, 35 feet in each direction. So essentially one sprinkler head can do 75 feet, which is like almost like the width of a house, right? <laughs> so my whole front yard, my front and the side of my yard, I've got three sprinkler heads. And for the most part, uh, it covers everything I want, but uh, I'll, I'll address that a little bit later on in the video. Um, so, so three sprinkler heads cover pretty much what I want. Um, I did the installation myself, very easy with some PEX. Um, essentially, I just used a manifold. I tapped off my home water supply, uh, ran one inch PEX across to the front, uh, which went to a three quarters uh, backflow valve. I researched all this. I am not a plumber. Um, but my plumber friend said, yep, you did it correct. So I'm telling you is how I did it and overall approved by a plumber. I'm sure there are different ways of doing this, but this is how I did it. Um, to a backflow valve and then out to the middle of my lawn, which is where I put a sprinkler head. Uh, and then I teed it off and one went this side of my lawn and the one went to the side of my house. Um, pretty straightforward process. Um, I dug the trenches myself. Um, each sprinkler head does have to have a cable. So if you do like a dig witch or whatever the heck they call it, um, that puts the pipe in the ground, but you also gotta be able to put the cable in the ground, which you probably could tuck in there, you know, yourselves as it's digging in the trench. But uh, I just dug the trench out. Uh, I went down about, uh, about a foot to six inches, somewhere right around there. Uh, the front of my lawn is very rocky in the bottom. So yeah, it was fun. Uh, anyways. So I ran the cables, everything was very smooth. They give you all the directions. Um, they give you all the little pieces other than the pecs and like if you do it yourself, but they give you like a, I think it's a one foot extension to the uh, sprinkler head that connects to uh, like your main line, which is my one inch pecs. Um, I got a lot of the stuff on Amazon, all the pieces I need, it was pretty easy. I will give you a warning that one inch pecs that comes coiled up is a huge pain in the ass to get straight. I mean, I looked, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I looked like an idiot out my front yard wrestling this thing. Uh, it was probably the most difficult part of this whole installation was just trying to get straight pieces uh, of pecs. Um, my only tip is let it sit in the sun for a little bit, let it get a little warm and then if you can get two people to help you, that would be another person to help you. Two, two people could do this probably okay, but I was by myself, so it was um, it was fun. It was a real pain in the ass. Um, but the installation process went very well. Um, I did the preliminary stuff to get an idea of how far these uh, the sprinkler heads would shoot and then plop them where, where it made sense, uh, the sprinkler heads. Now, one of the issues that I, I came across, which it doesn't really mention when you're doing the setup, is they say test your water pressure. So if you go out there, you put a little uh, valve on it, it's like a $5 part on Amazon, test your water pressure. Well, I'm on a well, so water pressure is not constant, right? It fluctuates. You know, you got a little container, a little reservoir, the little blue thing, and that adjusts the pressure. So when I did that, I wasn't thinking that um, when I placed them. So when I put everything together, everything shot a little bit small, not as far. Like 
I measured out 35 feet with a foot, like I wanted a foot to overlap for, you know, just to have it to make sure I was covered. But in the end, I ended up losing um, a few PSI. Um, I think it went down to like maybe 30. So I lost five feet. So now I wasn't quite getting where it needed to spray. Uh, luckily, I do have a IntelliDrive system, so I'm able to boost the water pressure. I Googled that, it's pretty, pretty straightforward process. Um, and that helped. So I'm now I'm back and I'm overlapping. Well, one of the things that I messed up on, which is because I'm not a plumber, is I know that PEX can't be out in UV. This is through Google. Um, so anything that's out in the elements needs to be something different other than PEX because it breaks down. Um, so what I ended up doing is when I came out of my house, I used iron pipe to my backflow valve and an iron pipe into the ground and then everything else was packed because it's, it's all it's all on a cover but what i ended up screwing up is is you probably shouldn't use iron pipe because it's going to rust which totally makes sense um my plumber guy's like yeah you're gonna have to redo that which really sucked because it looked really good when i was done i did like a little patio thing so i ended up having to rip that stuff up and i ended up doing a three quarter inch um uh epvc or I think it's called, it's like Charlotte pipe. I think it's what he called. He told me to get this stuff, a yellow, yellow goop. And it was fine, but what happens is when you do three quarter inch, that's with the PVC, I think that's three quarter inch outside diameter versus inside diameter. So the pipe that I'm putting in there is actually smaller. And what that ended up doing was actually um, restricting flow um, to my, <laughs> to my sprinkler heads, which then also shortened it, shortened the throw distance a little bit as well. Um, not as bad, um, I probably lost like two feet from each sprinkler head. So I've got like a little area that doesn't quite get 100% covered. Um, they recommended three quarter inch uh, backflow valve. I think if I were to do this again, I would definitely use a one inch backflow valve. Uh, it's probably an extra 20, 30 bucks. Uh, I do have to do the back of my house. Uh, that's next year. And I'm going to do one inch because they're on two different sides of the house. So I have to do another backflow valve and I can't tie into my existing system. So it's kind of two separate systems. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how I did a quick install. There's a, there's a quick few tips, um, uh, issues. So, um, you know, I set up an appointment. They were like weeks out for me to do like a one-on-one. -on -one. You, you talk with a, uh, a sales guy. Um, very informative, very nice. Um, gave me a military discount, which was great. Um, they said four to five weeks, if I remember correctly, and it was right on four weeks. Uh, everything came packaged correctly. Everything worked. Um, I hooked everything up. And I was having some issues with, um, I think, like my sprinkler heads would like just, like like within the first week they would just stop working, and you know I get a hold of tech support, which is hit or miss. Um, I think they're a much smaller company. They don't have a huge staff. There's probably like two or three guys in the whole company that actually do this tech support. So everything is very, very slow um, to get support. But sometimes, sometimes they you know you email them and poof they call you, but. I'd say out of like, because I had to email them five or six times. I think they replied to two of those emails and maybe got a one or two phone calls, maybe. Um, that goes with the sales guy and the support guy. Um, so, um, yeah. So, I mean, they were very, very helpful when I got hold of somebody. They were going to replace some sprinkler heads. Maybe it was a bad cable. I mean, they were, you know, they were, they were saying, you know, oh, you know, you just installed it. Maybe you've already got rodents that chewing on cables. I'm like, this thing has only been in the ground for a week. <laughs> like, uh, no, that's not the case. Um, but after some finagling, everything just ended up working. Um, and then, you know, a few weeks pass, everything seems to be running well. The setup was easy, putting the pins and stuff and setting all that up was very easy. Um, but I had my controller in the front of my house and it was just getting baked, right? The sun was just, and we had some hot days, 100 degree days, hitting that controller. And then I, I realized my stuff's not water. So, you know, I open up the controller, and there's a red light on it. And I'm like, I don't know. And it kept on falling out of Wi-Fi, right? So 
Wasn't on, wasn't connecting to Wi-Fi, wasn't watering, so I opened up the controller and this is what I saw. Um, so I mess with it, you know, do all the troubleshooting, reset this, and then eventually come back and leave it unplugged for like 20 minutes. So in my opinion, I think it cooled down, plug everything in, and then it come back to life. So this happened maybe, I don't know, like four times within a course of two weeks. So, you know, I did get, I finally did get a hold of somebody through support. Um, they are made the unit. Um, and I am mo moving the whole unit inside my house. So even though they don't mention this in their write-up, um, I think heat does not play very well with, with this box. So if you can keep it in a shaded spot when you install it, it's probably better off. Um, I ended up, well, it's, it's in that cabinet back there, up there above my, uh, above my microwave. Um, and this is my basement. Uh, so I haven't had any issues. After I wired it in there, it stays in cool. It's much cooler. I haven't had a single issue. Everything is just working. Um, talking about the app, uh, I use both Android and iOS. Um, iOS is fully baked in. Um, it, it, it's, it's developed, right? It's got all these pictures. It looks good. It works. Um, on Android, eh, it's definitely an afterthought. <laughs> not as pretty and just not very graphically uh, impressive. It's just, they definitely did it for iOS and maybe they're, you know, catching up to Android. Um, some things I would like to see uh, if you're on a well is their scheduling system is trash, uh, <laughs> to be honest. You can only really, you can only really set uh, how many inches of water you want um, at a time. And then you can pick like odd days and, uh, you know, every day. And essentially that's kind of about it. Um, I would like to see if there's a way to, uh, they need more features in the scheduling piece. You know, so people that are on well water, you know, if you're gonna water your lawn and you have lots of zones, you may wanna stick a break, some sort of break in between each zone. Um, each sprinkler head is considered a zone. So if you water one sprinkler for 25 minutes, I'd like to put a little break in there, maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then do the next one. It, it doesn't do that. It will just go and do every single head. So you could have your water running for, it could be hours, depending on how, how big your yard is, which is not great for a well system. Just a few more features for us well guys in the app for scheduling would be great. Um, and I think there's only, I think you can only do three schedules. Um, Cause I originally was just gonna do like, you know, do these two heads for one schedule, right? And then wait an hour and then do the other two heads. Well, I have three heads, but essentially do one head, wait 20 minutes to another schedule to do this one 20 minutes later or 30 minutes later. And then this one 40 minutes later, but you can only do three schedules. So you can't even break up the, the, the watering by schedules. Um, so that does get a little tricky. Um, overall thoughts. Uh, my grass looks great. It looks really good. Um, I haven't had any other issues other than the control box and the sprinkler heads uh, at the very initial beginning. Um, I do plan on at least getting one more for the side yard because it doesn't get around the corner, but I might be doing a deck, so I really haven't messed with that. And then I got to figure out the logistics on the back side of my house. Um, which I've got some craziness back there. So I got to think about that. Um, would I recommend ear green? I think, um, I think I would. I think cost wise are kind of expensive, sort of. Uh, but the ease, it's a little bit easier to install and you can do it yourself pretty easily. There's now, I don't have a bunch of valves, right? Cause like the valve and everything is in the sprinkler head. And the other irrigations, they got valves and all this stuff and control boxes and cables. It's all one cable, you know, one cable and it just runs and it wise off to the next one. It's a really simple process to install. So you might pay a little bit more for materials, but you save on the installation and then overall you'll save on water usage. So I think in the long run, you probably even out. Um, they do come with a two year warranty. And I think when I ordered mine, I got three years. Anyways, that's just my quick and dirty I didn't even look at my notes, so I was just kind of a little bit everywhere uh, of era green. Uh, if you got a question in there of how I did some stuff or about anything, let me know. Um, 
yeah, take care.